Hello, my name is Čenik Albel and I will present our paper about the new way to utilize rolling shutter effects in multi-camera systems. In summary, we show a novel camera configuration that requires just a simple change to existing multi-camera systems. Such configuration allows to utilize the rolling shutter distortions in a way it was not possible before. Most importantly, we can compute the motion of the cameras, remove the distortions or compute the depth of the scene. We present multiple algorithms that leverage such camera configuration and are extremely efficient and robust. The core idea for the camera configuration comes from the fact that many devices, most prominently smartphones, come with two or more rolling shutter cameras. When such cameras capture images while the device is moving, the images become distorted, which causes visual as well as computational issues. The common characteristics until now is that all the cameras scan the image in the same direction, for example from top to bottom. This causes the distortions induced by the motion to look the same. Instead, we propose to roll the shutters in the opposite direction, such that the distortions are as different as possible. Our algorithms can then utilize these differences to compute the camera motion, remove the distortions and other things which will be shown later. First, we take a look at the most general case where the motion contains both rotation and translation. We start by finding correspondences between the images. In this case we need five. Next, we form a system of algebraic equations. Then we solve those equations using our Grebner basis based solver. Note that this solver is very fast and therefore suitable for both robust and real-time estimation. As a result, we obtain the angular and translational velocities. If we then want to remove the rolling shutter distortion, we need to know the corresponding pixels in the input images. Standard techniques such as optical flow can be employed to obtain these correspondences. In general, each pixel was exposed at a different time and therefore different camera position. This allows us to compute its depth and create a depth map for each image. Finally, we can use these depth maps to reproject pixel colors to create an undistorted image. Now we take a look at the case where rotation motion is dominant, which is common in handheld photo or video. This time, things get much easier, as we only need two correspondences. The system of equations becomes much simpler, and we show how to solve it using a recently published solver that only takes around 4 microseconds. Once we obtain the angular velocities, we do not need to establish the dense correspondences, but instead we have a mapping to warp the entire image to an undistorted image. Here is a video sequence showing the undistortion in real time. We pause the video at moments where the distortion is significant. On the top you see the two original rolling shutter images. Bottom left is our undistorted result, which you can compare with the image from a global shutter camera on the bottom right. We can also warp both input images and combine the outputs such that a more complete image is formed. Note that even though the stitching is not perfect and some artifacts are still visible, this is without any kind of post-processing, just the pure geometrical warping using the computed motion parameters. It is worth mentioning some other results we can get using our methods. One of them is using the undistorted sparse correspondences in Structure for Motion Pipeline, where they clearly provide much better reconstruction than those coming from the rolling shutter images. This is especially apparent on the nearby objects. As mentioned earlier, with translation motion, we obtain depth map as an intermediate product. Since the depth map is computed from the differences in the images, it will be most accurate at the top and bottom of the image, where the differences are the largest thanks to the opposite shutters, and it degrades towards the center where the image rows were captured at the same time and look identical. The depth map will not be as precise as from a stereo rig, but it offers a reasonable depth estimation in a place where such pair of images with identical shutter direction would provide no depth information at all. Finally, we show the potential for many existing camera setups where one of the cameras has a zoom lens. As a demonstration, we show a result where one of the images is cropped and only a zoomed part is used for the computation of the motion parameters. The motion parameters can then be used to remove distortions from the entire larger image and the results look excellent. Thank you for your attention and for more information please visit our website.